Hello, my name is Lily Knopf. I'm in Miss Jim's classroom for English. Um, what I'm going to read is the Lorax, the Lorax, which was banned in Lake Plainville, California school in 1989. Uh, they believed that it would lead the children to go against the forest industry, which they also made a book that uh, the logging community made a book named uh, Truex, which shows the children why there's a need for the forest. <laughs> that one's pretty interesting too. Okay, so I'm gonna read the Lorax by Dr. Seuss. At the far end of town, where the quirky grass grows, and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows, and no birds ever sing, excepting old crows, is the street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the crook of grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, can you still see today? Where the Lorax once stood was as long, just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax? And why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere? From the far end of town where the crook of grass grows, the old Wunsler still lives here. Ask him, he knows. No, you won't see the monster. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurk room on top of his store. He lurks in the lurk room, cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of muff, myth muffled mood. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters and sometimes he speaks and tell us how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you perhaps if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail and you have to toss in 15 cents and it's a nail and the shell of a great, great, great grandfather's snail. Then he pulls up the pail, takes a most careful count to see if you paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you pay him away in his snoop, his secret strange hole in his previous glow. Then he grunts, I'll call you by whisper, my phone, for the secret I tell you are for your ears alone. Slump, down slumps the whisper my phone to your ear, and the old monster whispers are not very clear. Since they have to come down, through his nervly holes, and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says with his teeth, sounding gray, how the logs got lifted away and taken away. That is all for, for now. <laughs> Thank you.